Okay, in this tutorial, I am going to show you how to wire up UiPath with GitLab. Um, in this scenario, we're going to create a very basic UiPath um, project, wire it into GitLab, and then show some really basic Git functions to show source uh, control between the two tools. So here I'm in UiPath Studio Pro. This is the community version. This is the free version of UiPath. So if you want to play around with RPA, uh, building your own bots, uh, community version is very nice for that. So I'm just going to create a really basic process project here by clicking on new project with process. Let's call it RPA repo. Uh, we can just put in a very basic RPA repo test project. And we'll keep it as a VB project. Again, this is just creating a, a really basic um, UiPath project. So let that create. All right, so we're in our main UiPath interface. Uh, if I open the main window here, what you'll see is the files that have been created just as a stubbed out version of this project, pretty basic. Um, let's jump back over to uh, GitLab and we'll, we'll create the project on that side as well. So here I am in GitLab, and this is my personal project area. What I'm going to do is create a new project, and I'm going to call it RPA, RPA repo is what we called it, I believe, in UiPath. RPA repo, yes. So RPA repo will be the name of the project here. Uh, this is a project to test the integration of Git between UiPath and Git. So this is the name of the project. Again, we're just creating a really basic stubbed out project here on the GitLab side. Keep it private. Um, go ahead and create that project. So now the project is created. Um, what I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm going to need an access token for GitLab and UiPath to be able to communicate, mostly for UiPath to be able to talk to GitLab. For to access the repo to be able to uh, do file management between the two. So while I'm here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my profile, go to settings, and then here you can go to access token on the left here. So click on access tokens. We're going to create a new one called RPA test token or RPA repo token. Okay. RPA repo token. Um, we'll make it expire in a couple weeks, um, and then we'll make it give it API access. Again, this is a micro deep in personal access tokens, but I need to set one up so I can authenticate between UiPath and GitLab. So I'm going to go ahead and create that personal access token. Here is the token. You're going to want to copy this and then make sure it's on the clipboard so you can use it within the UiPath configuration. And then you're also going to want to probably save it off somewhere um, just so you have access to it later. I'm going to jump over to Explore and just create a, a text file and dump it in there for now. Um, call it desk token. Jump in there. And we'll paste it there and just, just let it sit there for now. Um, we'll come back to that in a minute. So I'm at my projects. Let me go back to my main project list. All right, so you see that the project has been created in GitLab, um, RPA repo. If I go back over to UiPath, what we're going to want to do is add the source control configuration. So here, down in the bottom right, you see this add to source control. Um, this is a brand new project, so the first thing we need to do is do git init, and that's going to init the local instance um, for git. So just hit git init here. It'll ask you where you want to put it. Just keep the default folder. It's now asking you which files you want to add to version control for Git to uh, be able to handle. Um, these are the, I'm just going to keep everything basic, all the default uh, files. I'll do the initial commit message for this particular um, code base. Now, once you get uh, into the process, the commit will be able to do like two-step things like this, commit and push. For now, we're just going to commit. Um, these files locally. So now Git is enabled for this particular project. And now in, in the bottom right, you can see that the master branch is uh, listed here. 
So it's now get controlled source. Um, now if I click on that, you'll see you have the, the typical Git commands. So now we have the repo set up on the GitLab side. We have the code base on the local side initialized with Git. Now we just need to get to the point where we can push it. So now we're gonna go, click on push, and it's gonna ask you for the remote repository that you wanna connect to. So the name of that remote repository is RPA repo. Because again, if you go back over to um, your projects, you can see here it's RPA repo. If I click on that, you'll see the project is here. So RPA repo is the name of the project. And then the URL, I can again go back over to GitLab and I can grab the URL for the project. So go back to the project. Just highlight this, copy the URL, jump back over to UiPath and paste that in there for the URL and put .git on the end. So now we have the name of our repo we're connected to in the URL. We can go ahead and add that to uh, UiPath so now it knows about this repository and we click save. Now it's trying to push the code up into that GitLab repo. So this is where we need to authenticate using our token that we just created. So go ahead and hit token as the option, do the username and then Go back to that file that I told you to save, the test token, grab that string, copy it, go back over to UiPath and paste that token that we created from GitLab in here so it can authenticate to that backend repository. Once we hit OK, it will now push the changes up to the repository. In the bottom corner on the left, you see changes were pushed successfully to RPA repo slash master. Looks good. Let's go check out the uh, GitLab side. So here we are in GitLab. If I click on this project, you'll now see that I have one commit, the RPA repo, and you'll see all the, all the files that were uploaded and, and initiated within this GitLab repo. So now we, we have the wiring between the local UiPath um, studio and the backend uh, GitLab code repository. So everything is wired, it's good. Uh, just to show you a couple other uh, features here, um, what we can do is uh, we'll create a branch because obviously you don't want to develop a lot on master. So let's go ahead and create a branch. And to do that, you just go into from UiPath, go into manage branches, and we can create a new branch here. So let's go ahead and call it, uh, we'll create a new one, click a little plus, type in the name, let's call it uh, coffee brand research branch. We'll call it Coffee Brand Research Branch. <laughs> um, so we add that. So now this branch exists within UiPath. We save that. Let's go ahead and switch to that branch because we don't want to be working on master. So switch over to the Coffee Brand Research Branch. Um, <clears throat> okay. So now we're on this branch. We want to just do some basic capabilities here. So what I'll do is I will go to do a web recording. But let me go ahead and open up a new... Uh, let me go ahead and open up a new tab and I'll go to UiPath and we'll just do a quick, really basic web recording. Um, hit the record button and I want to do coffee brands. And this brings up my coffee brand research. I'll go ahead and hit escape, exit out, save that recording that I did and you'll see it populate within the, uh, the activities being populated within UiPath. So now I have a bot that can, I can run and do that, that capability. Um, so now I've made some changes locally to the local um, code base. If I hit save, what you'll see over here on the left, you see like RPA repo and the main um, file down here, they look all normal. But as soon as I hit save, it's gonna recognize that these files have changed. And now you see these little pencil icons uh, next to the files, meaning that they've been changed. So now if I just right click on these guys, hit commit, that commits it locally. I can say coffee brand research capability. That was a change that I made with this commit. I'll go ahead and commit that. Okay, that's been committed. Um, now I can go ahead and push those up to the repo. So I'll, everything's been committed locally. Now I want to go over here to the coffee branch, coffee brand research branch, and I want to push this code up to the main repository. So the pushing the changes up. And what you see in the bottom left again, changes were pushed successfully to the RPA repo, coffee brand 
research branch. I couldn't have picked a worse branch name than that. All right, so jump back over to GitLab. Uh, we go back over to the project, hit refresh on this. And what you'll now see at the top is that you pushed coffee brand research to this repo um, just now. So we'll go ahead and do the merge request on this side. Um, coffee brand research capability, uh, updated robot to include coffee brand research. So I just had a quick description in there. I'm not going to go through all this process. This is your typical uh, merge request process. I'll submit the merge request on the GitLab side. I'll then go down and I'm going to go ahead and delete the source branch when I do it. Hit merge. All right, change of immersion to master. If I go back to the project, what you'll now see is that the coffee brand research capability um, has been merged into the master or into the uh, yeah into the master branch here. So that is showing uh, the ability to um, wire up UiPath back to the GitLab repo. It's showing some of the Git your typical Git functions, doing local changes. Um, committing those local changes and then pushing those up to the to the repo and then doing the merge request on that side. So this is very basic Git functions here and very basic uh, code control. The main thing here is showing you how to wire up and integrate UiPath to a GitLab backend. So thank you very much for uh, checking out this tutorial and I hope you have a wonderful day.